Fitness with your host Pablo Gunner and I'm here to talk nerdy to you about fitness stuff and nerdy stuff so essentially what that means is my workouts that I've been doing as well as the food I've been eating good or bad you know music movies shows video games comics all that stuff that I checked out throughout the month I'm gonna go ahead and go into a little bit of what I did working out now I'm gonna not go too in-depth because I'm gonna have that posted on the website at TNTM the show make sure you put the W's in there or just click the link in the description there I will have the specifics on all the workouts I was doing the workouts you know my captain's cardio Avengers abs stuff like that the for the month though I was doing a lot of running I was doing a lot of swimming I stepped it up on the running and stepped it up on the swimming throughout the month I started doing less running though so I just started with like six, then it was like four, and then two. So it went down as the month went on. Swimming though, I was stepping it up. So it was like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 36 minutes. So I stepped it up with the swimming. I also stepped it up doing a lot of calf raises, focusing on obliques. And I was doubling up on workouts as well. So what I would do is I'd do back and by, where I'd double things up that are connected. So a lot of those things like back and by, they work a lot of the same things. Like when you do lawn mowers, when I do lawn mowers, I feel it in my biceps pretty solid. So I'm like, man, that, I got a good pump from that. And a lot of workouts that you do for back incorporate your biceps and same thing, a lot of bicep workouts incorporate back. So you can do where you just focus on one or not, or you can do them both on the same day whatever works for you. I was also doing like an AM PM thing too. So I would like run in the PM. I, of course, I always try to do my yoga. Then I would run or swim and then abs. So that's what I was trying to do for like the AM. And then PM is when I would do my lifting. So I find that to be a lot easier. I, I don't have the energy to run and to do those kinds of workouts before sh my shift. But after my shift, then I'm good to go. So it's like a good solid like eight nine hours break in between as long as i eat enough i'm i'm good to go like i said i, I doubled up chest and try was another one that i doubled up on but then i started as the month went on i started breaking it down like i said lots of focus on calves forearms uh and obliques that's what i did and then like i said you can get the breakdown on the website check the link in the description now for food i had italian chicken salmon organic brown rice i think organic green beans organic chicken mozzarella ravioli, muffins, naranjos, organic rice cauliflower, Rudy's peach cobbler, uh, organic noosa, I think noosa is organic, I'm pretty sure, depends on which one you get, I think, and then uh, chilies, the restaurant, their chips and queso, and then eggs, sausage, potatoes, my mom made some homemade um, chicken chimichangas were phenomenal, and then and they weren't like fried like crispy or anything it really was just like it it's more it was just tasted more like a tortilla with chicken shredded chicken inside and then she put the grilled it a little bit or you know on the in the frying pan but didn't fry it it wasn't like it wasn't too bad then uh, of course breakfast burritos ones that i had made my wife had made or bought from her work and then as well as the mom the ones my mom made uh, and then chicken caesar salads turkey sandwich that's what i ate a lot of that stuff that I bought from Costco, a lot of it, especially the organic stuff. Yeah, and it was, uh, it was so it was a pretty pretty clean month for the most part. Like I said, what I do is I, I, I actually enjoy going to work. And I enjoy going to work purely because I stick to a strict workout and eating schedule. I mean, I, I still work out pretty good when I'm off, so that's fine, but like eating the wife if we're together she wants to eat out and we eat out and, and so we end up usually eating bad food or or at least good food that is bad for you like chilies that but that was mainly it for the month uh so it wasn't too bad like i said it was pretty it was pretty clean for the most for the most part uh now for music i listen to a lot of country uh rap and um of course always bb rexa i listen to tommy rett die a happy man that's a phenomenal song then murphy elmore's uh, whoever broke your heart that's that's a good one too uh sam hunt that's his album was monte Bayo and between pines so i was just like i was checking out all the sam hunt stuff and then coolio gangster's paradise dr dre the next episode then we have blake shelton mine would be you that's the song and then dustin lynch 
Good Girl, Kendrick Lamar's album Overly Dedicated, and like I said, always BB Rexa. I I always have BB Rexa in the mix every month. I, I'm like, I just have to listen to BB Rexa. She's great. I feel like she's always putting out something new too. Now for movies and shows, I finally, finally watched Hitman's Bodyguard, which was hilarious. Way funnier than I thought it was going to be. It was really good. And it was really interesting. It was really great because, you know, you have Samuel Jackson and Ryan Reynolds and they're just doing their things. And it's funny because I felt like Ryan Reynolds really kind of played him, played out of character because he was a guy that was like really sticks to plans and really, you know, sticks to the book and does things right and stuff. Samuel Jackson, he's just a, like a free spirit, but he is a hitman. I thought it was going to be like the basic story, and it is still like an A to B thing, but it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be like, hey, this hitman hires this guy to be his bodyguard, and that's what he is. He does bodyguard work, and that's not exactly the case. It's a little bit different, you know, love is involved and stuff, not necessarily between those two, but it, you know, it's, it's, it's really funny, it's really great, and, and I really liked it a lot. So I strongly suggest it. I would say that it's, it's a must it's a must-see. It's it's a strong rent, that's for sure. It is definitely a strong rent or stream if it's on any streaming service. Definitely check it out. And if it's not, then find it and rent it. It was the month of October. I, I watch my own version of Halloween movies. I don't I don't watch like the regular Halloween movies. So I was like, Blade. It's all about the Blade movie. So I was like, I wanna go not to mention, hey, I'm a nerd. So I wanna go back, you know, Blade is a Marvel character. The original, you know, black superhero right there. I mean, I don't know about original, but, like, he's pretty far back, so it's pretty legit. So, anyways, check that out. I was like, this movie's pretty legit, man. Like, it still holds up pretty well. It was pretty solid. That one's definitely worth re-watching. Like I said, that one's a strong stream as well. I don't care if it's Halloween or not. It's a solid movie. Then the wife and I watched the new It movie, and we are both like, uh, not that scary. Uh, not, it just wasn't that, I don't know if people are just get really scared easy or what it is, but it just was not that scary. So I was like, okay, like it was a, it was a solid movie, but just like, it wasn't that scary. As far as scary movies go, I, I just, it's not a must see even for me. I was like, eh, it's, it's fine. I guess it's, it's, it's a, probably like a, a just a mild rent or stream or whatever. I think we streamed it. So it was it was fine, uh, and then of course I had to watch Blade Two. Now Blade Two, it was it was solid, but this one they started introducing CGI, and it's kind of a little a little. It's the beginning of CGI. It felt like so you're like, eh. So the, the threat was definitely better. I feel like it's a better movie. They stepped it up in this one, so it was cool. But they started incorporating the CGI, which yeah, they put in some cool stuff, but it was a little weird too. It was very obvious, especially like nowadays. You go like, ah, it doesn't age well as far as CGI goes, but overall, better than Blade. And so it, it's uh, that one's even, even stronger. I think that one's a stronger stream or rewatch. So definitely check that one out. Like I said, once again, whether it's Halloween or not. Of course, Daredevil Season 3 came out, and that one had to be watched ASAP. So I checked that one out, and it is absolutely phenomenal. The whole season's just fantastic. Now, I will say I was somewhat disappointed with Bullseye because they don't call him by his actual name. They didn't really go with, you know, they don't even call him Bullseye. I think they say Bullseye once, but not, like, necessarily as a nickname or anything. That was disappointing. And you don't seem actually Don the Bullseye outfit. It seemed like they're leading up to that. They're building up to that. Like, that's going to be Season 4, which who knows if we're going to get that or not. Because it got canceled, we might see it. Hopefully, we'll see it with Disney+. Plus. I hope we do. So that would be really cool, but of course it's still it was still it was different than than what I had known or imagined it would be, which is cool, and and it's a plus and a con, it's a pro and a con at the same time. It's like yeah, I don't think that happened in the comics, but it's not predictable at the same time, so it's gonna be different. It's phenomenal though. I think easily the best season three of all of the Marvel Netflix shows, without a doubt. There's just, it just keeps, they keep on stepping it up. They did this like prison fight this time that was just, it was epic. Definitely have to check that one out. Just the way that, just the way that the characters developed and stuff, it was, it was, it was just phenomenal. So yeah, definitely that one's a strong must see without a doubt. Definitely a strong stream because it's, it's still, it's still on there as far as I know. 
for now at least. I also checked out Star Wars Resistance. Yeah, it's very kiddy, uh, and it's, it is like 3D CG animation. I still enjoy it because it's Star Wars. Just to give you an idea, Resistance actually takes place before the new movies. So it's like a lead up to the new movies, I think kind of. It's slowly getting darker and more serious as all of the Star Wars shorts have done, which is they start really kiddish, even the animation, everything, and then eventually you're like, wow, this is pretty dark. So by season three, if this keeps going, I think it's going to be a pretty dark and pretty awesome show, and hopefully we'll see some Kylo Ren or the Knights of Ren in it. That would be sick. I think I have no doubt that it'll lead there eventually. Like I said, these things take time to build. But I, I enjoy it. I like the characters. Now, Gifted Season 2 also is out. I love that show just because it's X-Men. I don't care if it's like these C-listers or not. They're phenomenal. This is absolutely how X-Men should be done. And I think that if they do X-Men as part of Marvel, they should do it as a show instead of as a movie. Even though they're probably going to do movies anyways, I would prefer it as a show just because this proves how well it can be done and how it should be done with mutants because you need that characterization, that build world building of everything that's going on. I mean, the world building, it's pretty much already laid down, but the character building is, is what matters most. And then for video games, I had been playing a lot of Mass Effect 2, replaying it, starting a new game, and so that was a lot of fun, of course, because November was coming up, so I was like, oh, I gotta be ready for November 7th and 7 day. And that was on PlayStation 4. On the Xbox, I had been playing Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which is a phenomenal game. There's so, it's, I feel like there's almost too much in that game. But it's weird how different I played it from the other two Tomb Raider games, like these new ones. Because the first one, I was just like, I felt like the progression was just done perfectly the way it was. It was just perfectly well balanced. And the second one was, it was, I... I didn't care for the previous game. This one was better than the previous one, but I still feel like the first one of this iteration was the best one. It is still phenomenal. I had a blast playing it. I love Lara Croft and, and where she goes in her story, but I'm just ready for her to get to that point where she is the Lara Croft legend. You know, she has the holsters on the side and she's just running and gunning, you know, almost James Bond style and stuff. So that's what I'm ready for. It is a phenomenal game though. That one, in fact, I would say it's very close to a strong buy and, and for game of the year for me. I mean, I only played a few year, a few games for 2018, so it's it's really hard to say. Spider Man was was my game of the year. When it comes down to it, like this one was really close. It had a lot of content, but it was one of those where it had so much content that by the end I was like, I'm kind of sick of this game. I'm ready to move on. I even looked up like how to beat stuff and I still couldn't beat it. It was frustrating. So when I look something up and I still can't figure it out and I'm like tired of playing your game, that's when I go like, it's still like a strong buy and yeah, and that's a, that's a personal choice to be like, I'm going to continue playing this game until I get sick of it. Yes, I can stop before I get there, but I feel like a game shouldn't be that long, shouldn't have that much content or, or if it does have that much content, you shouldn't be sick of still playing it at that point. So it looks phenomenal, wonderful story. Like if you just do the story straight through, it's pretty short, it's it's pretty great. I will say though, it's ch challenging to do that because you have to upgrade so much stuff and it does get very difficult. So you do have to upgrade stuff, but you don't have to beat everything to upgrade it enough. So it's pretty good. And if you upgrade as you go along, which I didn't, I just did mostly story and then at the end I had tons of extra content to do. I had gotten sick of the extra content. So just play a little bit as you're going in the area that you're in. That's what you should do. Uh, that's what I should have done. That's pretty much how I played the first game, and that's probably why I enjoyed it the most. I still give it... I, I was For me, it's still a strong buy, though. I'm so glad the wife got it for me. And then for comics, Shanghai Red, that ended. Uh, it ended sooner than I expected to. I thought it was going to be at least one to three more issues they could have done. L wonderful ending, though, to that book. It was fantastic. Speaking of fantastic, there's also Marvel 2-in-1, The Thing and Mr. Fantastic, which it's about them finally coming back together as a family. Now, yes, it's just the two of them going on this mission. They're actually going to get a character from, that they left in this other universe that's from their universe. They're like, yeah, you know, we got to bring him back and stuff. And then they talk about how they've been traveling all these different universes and this different Doctor Doom but like because there's no Fantastic Four, he's like doing all these great things. It's really, but you get hints of like 
could turn evil because there is a Richards that he knows of. And Aaron ended up just being phenomenal, but it, it was the best part about it was that Mr. Fantastic was like, well, we didn't think you wanted to go on this adventure with us and our family. We thought you'd get bored and stuff like that. And he's like, you guys never asked us. This is messed up. You know we love that stuff. We love you. You know, we're all family and you just left us. And then you have Batman Beyond, which is phenomenal and it's great because they're reintroducing the original joker back into it slowly but surely and it's mind-blowing and crazy and you have dick in there and all these other characters from the past then titans has been yeah titans had been really solid at the time it was at that point i think what was really great about it and this ties into nightwing because nightwing's another one of the books that's phenomenal and it's phenomenal because what happened is Nightwing had gotten shot in the head in the Batman in the Batman comic and so he has lost his memory and So he has amnesia and I really related to the Nightwing comic because I actually got into a really bad car accident I had amnesia. I couldn't remember like two years back So point is is like I really related to it because I had been through that and so that was really cool and so in Titans they're dealing with the loss of of Dick Grayson because he doesn't remember who he was so he's no longer part of the team and so it was cool is you had an issue where he was starting to have this little budding romance with Miss Martian and then he leaves the group because of course he doesn't remember being Dick Grayson he doesn't remember being Nightwing now they're dealing with that loss so it was crazy so it was actually two issues where like I said completely different things and it was cool because in that romance one they were stuck in this like weird dream thing where like they were going through these different genres of like shows or movies like there was a western it was no war it was all these different things so it was like a mindscape mind f thing it was really great so and then the next one was them dealing with the loss of him even though he's not dead it seems like he's dead because he's not himself and then you have TMNT, which is always great. And it was this freaking crazy fight on Burnout Island where it's the Earth Protection Force, Krang, as well as the, the, the Triceratons and the Turtles are there to help and the Mutanimals. It's just crazy. It was phenomenal. And then Shuri, I think the first one, first and second one maybe, but definitely the first one is phenomenal. She's really standing on her own and she wants to do her own thing. And you can see she's the brains. And it's great because it has that similar humor from the movie and it works really great of course captain america has been phenomenal too because they have this like this crazy spy thing going on you know and cap has to go save his gal it's really great and he faces against taskmaster which was epic and that, yeah so and then catwoman was really crazy too because you had this thing where she has this best friend that's in this mental hospital and it turns out that one of the doctors is drugging her and possibly molesting her or something of the kind like so he's, there's some inappropriateness going on it's kind of like i loved it because it's it's one of these things that's like hey like this is messed up this is part of the like hashtag me too movement can be moved along with there and I, I liked that they point out like hey this is things that happen in real life so and this is messed up so i love that they pointed it out and then green arrow was has been phenomenal with uh, julie and shauna benson running that fortunately they ended their run dc did but it was a phenomenal run so definitely check that out so that was it for halloween month which it was it's crazy because halloween i'm always like it takes me a while to get into and then i get super into it at the end of the month and i'm sad that it's over and i'm like no halloween goes until thanksgiving that's when uh, halloween is over so i kind of just kept the the theme going of halloween like you know with everything as much as i could really with what i was watching and stuff like that into the next month so yeah it was uh it was it was a great month uh, of course and phenomenal so uh i don't really think i did anything for halloween unfortunately which i love halloween i just think i had to work or something was going on so i i just didn't really do anything but i would like to know what you did for halloween and what you like to do for halloween and what you do for dressing up especially because like a lot of cosplayers are like I don't know what to do because I always dress up for conventions, so it's really weird for me. So, and for me, I always used to love Halloween because of that. Now it's a little lost because of conventions, of course, but I think it's like when you go for more of a spooky theme, you know, like dresses the crow. You know, I always used to do the crow just because it was easy and I love the crow. And so it was awesome. That's it for me. Love and peace. Talk nerdy to me.